is uh, uh, one, to one to two hundred. Mm-hmm. So that means you, I mean, you you need uh, you know two million. I mean, uh, are you? Uh, do you think this is also going to mean when you start having community policing forces based in states, there's going to be a you're going to need a lot more money for police generally for the for the whole country? Is it? Oh, clearly, say. clearly, well, you're uh, going to need a lot more money. We're going to need a lot more. Uh, um, human resource at, at that level because if it is going to be genuinely effective mm. you need more officers at the local level because these are going to be beat officers so every community at the very least would have two to four police officers that are known to them that can track what is going on and they must be local to that community as well that's what make that's what will make them community uh, beat right. officers, uh, and and the Inspector General of Police in Nigeria actually recognizes this, and I believe this is what he's working towards. Uh-huh. He's working towards increasing the number of men and women that we have in, in in the Nigerian police force, but ensuring that the recruitment is at the local level. Oh, so are there already conversations ongoing between the IGP Inspector General and the governors and, and the state governors about? Developing these new police forces. Absolutely, because I mean, someone like Akiti, it, it seems like it, well, it seems a pretty peaceful place right now. But obviously, uh, plenty of states like Borno and so on, where you, you, it, you can no 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 state is immune because we 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 are not an island. Mm-hmm. We have states around us that have also suffered uh, from the bad effect of insurgency. Yeah. Take Kogi, Akiti. Yeah. Is neighbor with Kogi State, right. and Kogi State has had incursions mm-hmm. from uh, some elements, certain elements mm-hmm. in the northeast insurgency, uh, because wow. some of them originally came from Kogi, right. uh, the Al Banawi faction okay. of the uh-huh. Boko Haram wow. uh, uh, have their roots mm-hmm. in in Kogi State, and there's a sense in which many believe that the current Upsurge in kidnapping and banditry mm. is a product of those who are exiting the northeast uh, uh, insurgency. Wow! Mm. So you think these things are pretty? Um, they're, they're, pretty they're, they're inextricably intertwined, and we must not uh, ignore the effect of this drive uh, and pressure coming from the north on the south. I mean, south has been relatively, at least the southwest, has been relatively peaceful uh, over the last decade. But that's not the same again. There's no question that we need to take um, effort. We we need to take very key steps to address the increasing fear uh, of crime in in, in our environment. You said you had a meeting with the, the, all the Nigeria governors forum, all 36 governors, and you're talking about security because there's a lot of concerns about security in the country. There's a lot of concern, and it's a priority item on my own agenda as the chair of the governors forum. I mean, there seem to be at least three very distinct conflicts, particularly in the northern part of the middle belt, northern part of the country. As you said, one of them is the, 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 the Boko Haram in insurgency, the, mm-hmm. the Islamic State, West Africa province <laughs> insurgency, which tends to be in the northeast of the country, but obviously, as you've just said, not exclusively. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and then, you, then you have what appears to be cattle rustling, banditry, banditry, and so on going on in the northwest. We've seen a lot of that in Zamfara State, and we're now mm-hmm. seeing that going across into uh, to Sokoto and Kaduna. And then the, the, the crisis in the middle belt is more about land resources and is a sort of classic heard a farmer clash that we've seen right across West Africa, right across the Sahel. It seems to be partly to do with environment, partly to do with uh, political agendas, and a lot of different factors. Um, How do your northern um, counterparts see this? Do they see these as distinct uh, types of conflict? Or are they worrying that they're all sort of fading in, sort of fusing into each other and creating uh, a force for instability? Uh, What's their take on it? Obviously, they're very worried about it. Um, these were communities that were relatively peaceful uh, 
a decade or two ago, but increasingly they've had to confront these proliferation. Mm-hmm. So, and they see them as intertwined. Right. Yes, the situation in the Northeast could very well be traced to governance failure, let me put it that way, yep. uh, on the previous administration that now culminated in uh, mismanagement of uh, the conflict situation there. However, it has since degenerated to, if you like, um, a combination of pressure from climate change in the Lake Chad Basin where you used to have a lot of thriving agricultural production that has now given way to desertification and pressure down south. So, and that pressure resulted in pressure in the Benue Trough, right. the middle belt that yep. you refer to. Yep. And you could also argue that it has also impacted on Castle Rustling banditry in the northwest uh, uh, or northwestern part right. of, of the country. They are intertwined, yeah. at least in one certain respect. The proliferation of small arms and light weapons have made this conflict inextricably intertwined. And again, these are weapons that, if you ask me, have managed to infiltrate into these communities as a result of failure of government, mm. but also because of the problems coming from Libya, from the Sahel, uh, and the uh, Iswap uh, 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 control of ungoverned territories in, in, in those places. How has that then impacted what is going on down south, like here. Of course, the pressure on the military, the pressure on security institutions has left a vacuum in other parts of the country yeah. because there's a concentration of both military and paramilitary activities in the northeast zone. And since nature abhors a vacuum, there are people who are stepping into that vacuum. Uh, economic Difficulties have also uh, exacerbated the tension. Right. Um, the transhumans challenge that, as you rightly pointed out, has been there in the West African coast, even in the East African coast. This is something that has always been there, leading to herder farmer clashes over the years, has, been, has become protracted mm. because the mechanisms for resolving this in the past appear to have become weakened. And two, the weak criminal justice system has allowed impunity to reign. So many of the people involved in these problems are not punished. And they feel they can get away with murder and increasingly continue to do this because our justice system is not speedy and it does not quickly punish those who are responsible for this uh, uh, problems that you've identified. Uh, I mean, are the governors a bit worried about the rhetoric around some of these uh, these conflicts? Because you hear some fairly hot-headed words coming out of uh, some of the state governments about the herd of armor uh, angle and some communities not being able to live in some parts of the country and things like that. I mean, presumably the Governors' Forum is a very important meeting place for governors to get together and counter this. But I mean, I think what people are saying is that uh, it is a resource issue, but it has been politicized. And it's got the dan- there is a danger for it to cause more political division uh, as it goes on. And if it's felt that it's not being addressed... Is that, I mean, does that come up in your discussions? Oh, regularly. Um, <laughs> governors are the, if you like, field commanders. Mm-hmm. They're actually the ones who are at the 
phonics dealing with these issues directly with victims right. and survivors as well as with the criminals behind these atrocities. But governors are also sufficiently knowledgeable to understand this as the failure to manage our diversity and difference. And that we must continuously play critical roles in reassuring Nigerians that Nigeria belongs to all of us through the way we conduct ourselves both at the local level and as partners in the Nigerian project. So, language is one critical thing. Governors clearly understand the need to be more sensitive about their language. Uh, Two, governors understand the importance of communicating clearly the knowledge of managing the security challenges. Let me give you a practical example yeah. that is recent. Ruga mm-hmm. is an issue that has dominated the media yeah. over the last two, three weeks. Can, can we tell our listeners? It, it, this, is stands can, for, this, this stands for rural grazing areas. Right. But there's an interpretation of it also mm-hmm. as a settlement right. where nomadic herders stay. So the, the fear is from communities with lots of lush pastures exactly. in the southern part of the country. Exactly. Are, are going to that face their land is going to be taken over and herds of cattle will come and they would have no control and their farmland would be destroyed right. uh, in favor of the uh, owners of the cattle. And this has been a huge controversy in the country over what the last month or two. It's been a huge that. controversy. Yeah. But just as we've also tried to explain to the best of my knowledge, I was part of conversations around the National Livestock Transformation Plan. Right. And the idea behind the National Livestock Transformation Plan is actually a conflict mediating mechanism in order to stop these firmer herder clashes by putting in place specific hectares of land for volunteer states. It's not a compulsory program for volunteer states that are frontline states in this head. head So, geographically, you say frontline, you mean when I say frontline, Benue, Plateau, Kogi, those that are across the belt of Nigeria. Exactly. So, so, as they're coming, these are the states that are usually the recipients first. Right. Hmm. So, somewhere there that you can identify as a grazing place with facilities, schools for them, veterinary, uh, veterinary clinics, watering holes, milking uh, pots within a confined space so that they don't get out to destroy the cassava farm, the maize farm, what have you. But when you and this is something to the best of my knowledge, that is not unique in most parts of Nigeria. Mm. Obudukato Ranch has been there since the 50s. Right. The, in my state here, we've had at least three from the days of our law. Okeako, Erifu, and um, uh, I can't remember where the third one is now. We, 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 yeah. We've had this since 1958-60. And this is the case across the country. But this is also where language is important. Mm -hmm. Even though that has been agreed, that NLTP that I talked about, Mm -hmm. there was a parallel initiative Mm -hmm. championed by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture without full consultation, Mm -hmm. unlike the 